Hey everybody, Dr. Sean O'Meara. I'm a health and performance optimizing physician here to talk to you about how long you might live, life expectancy. That's right, if you want to learn how you can figure out maybe how long you're gonna live, pay attention to this video. I'm gonna go into the studies that are out there, two studies, and in the course of this video, I'm gonna talk about what you can do to improve your life expectancy, basically how you live longer, and not only that, but I'm very, very motivated to how well you live to improve the quality of your life. So um, stay tuned in this video. We're going to get into that. And in this particular um, video, I'm going to cover two studies, okay? One from kind of old 2014 from the uh, British um, Journal of Sports Medicine. Uh, the other one, the British Medical Journal, uh, a little bit more recent. So let's let's get into the two tests. They both pertain to um, standing on one leg. So I'm going to demonstrate that early on so you, you have an idea about it. Um, the first one's real easy. Um, you just stand on one leg with your eyes closed. I'm going to back up just a little bit and you put your, your foot behind the, your one leg and you stand just like that, hands down by your side. You fail the test. If you lose balance, have to go, you know, if, if you have to put your foot down or something, that's a fail. You get three attempts and in the study, they measure the longest of the successful ones. So you want to stand at least, if you can, for 10 seconds. And um, about 21% of the people failed the test. So you, um, you know, about, that's about fifth, fifth of the people study. And we'll get into that study. So one leg behind you, stand with your eyes open. Now that's pretty simple. The next one is a lot more difficult. A lot more difficult. You got to be ready to fall. You got to look around. And be ready to catch yourself. You got to open because you can do this with your eyes closed. And let me just restate: it's very hard. Okay, unless you're really healthy and really young, this one is hard to do. Okay, so be forewarned. You don't want to be doing this with pointy objects, a knife sticking up somewhere, uh, or, or whether. So be be careful. So I'm just going to demonstrate it for you. Um, you. It's again standing on one leg. And the test is over if you lose, when you lose balance, or you gotta put your foot down, okay? So you stand on your hands down by your side, you raise your foot, and this one you close your eyes. Okay, so it becomes a lot more challenging. I'm not gonna talk to you with my eyes closed, but you wanna stand as still as you can, as long as you can. So in this particular um, test, it, it, what it does is there's three systems required in that last test, that particular life expectancy test, your proprioception, your ability to feel on the bottom of your feet where you are. The second is your vestibular network interpreting where you are with, with, um, without the addition of your vision. So, you know, it's sort of like if you close your eyes and tip your head, you know where you are in a cave, um, in the balance, and that's, that's the vestibular system that allows you your neurologic system allows you to process that. It's an ingenious, miraculous system. And the third one is your vision, okay? So those three things allow you to stand up and maintain your balance. So when you cut out your vision, you've got only proprioception and vestibular reception. So it's basically neurologic, no vision. And how well that functions allows you to uh, interpret where you are in space and maintain your balance. The problem is, as you not so much age, but as you accumulate chronic disease, because as you, in America and around the world, as you get older, you get more chronic disease because typically you're accumulating more visceral fat, you get more chronic disease, and it degrades that neurologic system. So you cannot stand well, um, and, and you lose that, ca that capability. So um, it, it degrades over a period of time. Now, young people, they can stand just like I was standing. You stand like trees, nice and still. Typically between the, I've seen, you know, kids about the age of 10 to about 13, 14, that's the sweet spot. That's where they can stand like, like I was there, like a tree, very, very still. Um, the rest of the time you'll be wavering and, you know, you may have to practice this a, a two or three times, but once you practice it a few times and you do the best that you can, you know, like, you know, five times or something, you're not going to get better. You can't practice functionality. Okay. So this is sort of like, a reflex okay you can't practice a reflex you know the deep tendon reflex you can't really practice that the way to improve this is you've got to uh, improve your health okay so um it's it's not really some a, a product of 
of uh, practice, okay? It's, it's functional physiology, how, how well your neurologic system and your brain works to interpret it. So in the first test, um, where they studied uh, individuals just with their eyes open, standing on one leg, it's a 12-year study in a British um, Journal of uh, Sports Medicine involving 1,700 people uh, be uh, between the ages of, um, uh, well, between the years 2008, 2020, and they found that um, uh, about one fifth of the people failed, you know, that test, about 21%. And an inability, the, the take home conclusion I studied was an inability to stand 10 seconds, okay, um, from your middle age to later years in life, uh, was there was a near doubling risk of death in the next 10 years. So you were twice as likely to die if you can't stand 10 seconds from middle age to later later years in life, uh, 10 seconds with your eyes open on one leg, okay? So that's pretty significant, that's, that's a good little test. If you can't do that, I encourage you to get help. There's something wrong, you need to improve your health so that you can reduce that risk, and it's an eye-opening test. It's way better than cholesterol, okay? Don't bother wasting your time with cholesterol. If you really, if you fail this one, you fail your cholesterol test, but you fail uh, I'm less worried about you than if you fail this one, okay? So um, basically the numbers break down this way. If you're under the age of 40, uh, then you should do this for 45 seconds, okay? On average in the, in the people study. If you're between the ages of 40 and 49, you should do it 42 seconds, okay? That was the average uh, length of time in that study is 42 seconds. If you're uh, 50, oh, I'm sorry, 45 seconds for under the age of 40, uh, so it's a longer, 45 seconds, and then 42 seconds if you're between the ages of 40 and 49. And if you're between the ages of 50 and 59, you should do this uh, 41 seconds. So one second faster. And then the ages of uh, 60 to 69, you should do it 32 seconds. So there's a big degradation, the degrading um, in the performance. So down to 32 seconds if you're 60, 69. And... Um, uh, and then 70, uh, 79 was uh, just uh, uh, 10 seconds. So um, yeah, it, it drops off pretty precipitously. So you um, can try that one-legged uh, one uh, stand with your eyes open to, to test and see how you do. I'll, um, I'm gonna put some text up on the screen to uh, reflect what those numbers should be uh, as, as this video goes along. So hopefully you can, you can track that information relevant to your particular age group. Now, the next study um, looked at uh, was, was 2014, the British Medical Journal. This time they studied 2,700 people and they started them at all at the age of 53. It's interesting. And they followed them up again over 13 years. So what they found is, um, that they, they had them test, again, their best leg, whichever one their best leg. So, you know, if they had a gunshot in one leg, you don't stand on that one, you wanna stand on your best one. If one knee is worse than the other, stand on the good knee, okay? Uh, to do that test. And uh, you wanna you want to test for, um, again, uh, how long you can stand uh, on one leg with your eyes closed. But it's not just how long, in the study they just tracked how long, but really how well you study is really important. As a health and optimizing physician, how well you stand with your on one leg with your eyes closed tells a lot about your health, not just how long. So um, I'll, I'll explain that in just a little bit. But what they found, if you had an inability to stand two seconds, okay, so you, you, could, you couldn't stand two seconds and you're age 53, then you had a three times more likely chance of being dead in the next 10 years uh, compared to a 53 year old that could stand eight seconds. So again, what that means, if you are 53 or close to you know, 53 and you can't stand two seconds, you got a three times greater risk of being dead in 10 years compared to somebody of the comparable age who can stand eight seconds, okay? So that's a, that's a significant finding. So. Um, a few things I want to talk to you about. Okay, so, um, you know, you can't practice this, so how do you improve it? You got to improve your health, okay? To, you really have to improve your health. But this is interesting. I started, uh, I found out about this life expectancy test 
um, uh, in 2014 when this thing came out. And uh, I started studying this and trying it out. And I got up, I got up every morning in, <laughs> in my house and I did this for two years straight, okay? Two years, every single day, I tracked it on my cell phone. I put how long I was able to do this and I paid attention to how well I was doing it as well. And I tracked this data for two years. And I, right from the beginning, I could do it 90 seconds with my eyes closed, okay? Uh, my eyes closed because I had been f basically at that point uh, almost, you know, more than four years um, high fat, low carb, paleo, keto, okay? So, you know, doing doing good things, high intensity exercise, I was using a sign. I was, I, was crush, I was crushing it. So I could stand 90 seconds with my eyes closed. Now, I'll try to duplicate it. I would probably, I'd be doing like this, you know, wobbling, you know, uh, trying to maintain my balance, but I, I, I could do it for the study. I was just wobbly, okay? But 90 seconds, I didn't have to put my foot down. I maintained my balance. I had a lot of correction. It was ugly, it wasn't really attractive. It wasn't like I can do it today. And uh, so I did that for two years. And guess what? No improvement. No improvement. Let me say it again. No improvement. 90 seconds. That was it. I stopped at 90 seconds. I probably could do more, but you know, my leg would get tired. And but my quality of that test did not improve. Okay. So I gave up on it. I, you know, I was like, well, why am I doing this? You know, I'll, I'll test something out. So um, I wait six years. I go, you know, six years. And then I repeat that test and, uh, you know, lots of water underneath the bridge, I, you know, eating healthy, all these, these things. And so I kind of thought I, I would be better at this test, right? No, I, I basically did it, uh, you know, again, 90 seconds. May, maybe I could have done it five or 10 minutes. Maybe I could have done it longer, but I was about the same wobbly as I recollected I was six years earlier. So. I was still wobbly, you know, wasn't, I wasn't like these kids and the way I am today, they could stand still. I wanted to be like a kid, you know, I wanted to stand still and I just didn't get that even though i had been living healthy. So I was disappointed. I was like, dang, this is kind of like uh, frustrating. This is not one I'm going to come out and talk about because, you know, I'm a health and performance optimized physician. I wanted to show people how to perform better, how to improve their health. And this test did not really demonstrate that. I couldn't see any improvement in six years. So I stopped doing it. And then one year later, you know, so this is now like seven years down the road, uh, I see another reference to this test and I, I just decide to do it and boom, stand like a tree. Okay. So there I am, uh, just repeat it for you briefly. And I could stand like a tree with that wobbly. So what changed what did i do in that one year that like the biggest change i have ever seen in one year um in in my you know 12 years of being healthy what what in the world i, I was like my god how could i go from wobbly all over like you were going to be probably when you do this test to standing so still so um you're not probably going to like this you're going to probably push back, but I'm going to tell you, the only thing different was I adopted, I went from OMAD, one meal a day, and, uh, you know, occasional, like, uh, you know, extended fasting. I went to a dedicated weekly practice every week of fasting, a minimum of three straight days, 72 hours, and one week out of the month, I did 96 hours. So 72 to 96 hours, zero calorie, not, not any morsels of food, straight on, no little breaks, straight on, uh, extended fasting. Dramatically changed me. Dramatically. Gave me much more neurologic benefit. Now, um, did other things change? Well, I have off the chart energy. Um, and I, 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 you know, I haven't done any other particular tests to see uh, my reaction tests and improved considerably too. So my ability to react significantly better. Uh, my memory, I think is way better. My uh, functional capacity, everything seems to continue to improve. That's why I tell people that so far in the strategies that I follow, recommended developed by the National Science Foundation, I see no insight. 
I think you can, you're, we don't know what age it stops happening, but I, I keep getting better and I'm 59 years old, okay? 59 years old and I keep getting better. So the big one here, take on point, is extended fasting. Uh, if you have not started fasting and you need to start a practice of fasting, listen to me. Do not start the three-day fast. If you do, you will not be happy with me. I won't be happy with you because the chances are you're going to give up on this wonderful intervention. This is something that you have to overcome your tendency to have eaten all the time, multiple meals throughout the day and probably snacking throughout the day. And when you go to fast three days, you're going to be miserable, you're going to hate it, and you'll never do it. So you got to start very, very slowly. you got to reverse all that dependency on food that you have been eating all the time, snacking around the clock. And you got to slowly start maybe with a two-hour fast. And maybe that's all you can do. Um, or a one-hour fast. And you got to slowly progress it over the course. And it might take you a year to get up to a three-day fast. You know, where you start maybe two hours, you know, for one week. And then the next week you're doing maybe... Uh, four hours the next week maybe you do six hours the next week you do maybe 12 hours the next week maybe you're up to 18 hours the next week so we're now we're like at six weeks right and you're up to maybe 18 hours and then maybe seven weeks you're up to 24 hours you know so you're very slowly increasing this okay everybody's different you can't write down those numbers and expect it's going to be perfect for you if you're really weak and tired, you may, you may have to go even slower. But if you get this, I got this, and you keep progressing, then you can maybe advance a little bit faster, okay? So um, doing extended fasting is a, uh, the key that I feel was the most significant contributor to my ability to be able to stand so still. Now, I have, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not bragging. Th this isn't me. Oh, my God. Uh this was, this is mother nature, okay? This is, you know, our, our ancestors who would have fasted a lot longer than three days or four days. They wouldn't have caught a bison or um, a woolly mammoth, or whatever they were hunting every three to four days. It, it, there have been a long, longer stretches than that. So I can't take credit for this. I'd love to think I thought it up, you know, be cool. But no, I just reasoned that we would have done a lot of ex extended fasting by necessity out of you know circumstances so um i decided to test it and uh and so um credit to to nature uh biology uh our, our previous ancestors who sacrificed a lot to do that and so that's that's what uh, that's what changed me but i'll tell you i haven't i haven't seen any 50 year olds uh even a 40 year old uh or a 30 year old uh and I haven't even seen a 20 year old that can do, do that one legged test with their eyes closed as well as I can. But I haven't met a 20 year old that's done three day fasting uh, every single week, three to four days fasting every single week for a year. Okay, so um, track it, do it, see how you do when you, when you uh, do this uh, uh, extended fasting and see, uh, see how you perform and uh, watch. Um, Watch to see that uh, you get better in that particular test, and uh, and then you'll uh, I think you'll be able to benefit from from this as well. Now, there are other things, of course, I did you know during this time besides you know fasting. It wasn't wasn't just fasting, but I had been doing largely uh, those things uh, all along. So um, I love doing videos uh, tracking. It's you know I sometimes I videotape myself doing something, not even understanding that it's going to get better. But um, it, it, it just improves over a period of time. So finding out these, these metrics. So videotaping your ability to balance can be very helpful, helpful to, to track that. Videotaping your ability to sprint, very helpful. You'll see that these, these things get better. So uh, this goes to your health. Again, it's not something that you can practice to get yourself more healthy uh, by doing this fasting. Um, is, is really beneficial uh, as a practice. And then as far as the... Um, the uh, uh, eating style, I told you, I'm not eating anything, but let me tell you, when I break my fast, it is serious eating time, right? Because it's like we just caught a, a bison, so I'm not eating one little meal. I'm not stopping at, you know, one quarter pounder, two quarter pounders, no. I'm killing it. 
I'm going to eat as much of that bison and woolly mountain as I possibly can. So I've adopted a practice called feast and uh, uh, fasting, okay? So uh, I really feast, okay? When I break my, my fast, I'm, it's game on. I, I'm trying to purposely enlarge my stomach, my capacity for eating a large amount of meat. I purposely eat a large amount of meat to grow that so that I can grow great capability and then fast and it goes back down. Okay, so yeah, I, do, I do that. Uh, I eat a lot of meat and for two days, I don't exercise. I'm not exercising. I'm eating around the clock, getting that meat into me as much as possible. And let me give you some tips, okay? So uh, when you eat this meat, okay, uh, I have learned, I break my fast at a churrascaria, Brazilian grill uh, steakhouse, one of these um, Brazilian grill churrascarias, okay? All you can eat, and it's like $55, fogo de chá. I don't have any relationship with any of these establishments other than I go there, but uh, I don't have any financial relationship with them. Um, but I've been there so much now that the places I go to, I'm on a first name basis with everybody there. So I go there and I chow out. Now, originally when I first went there, you know, I was the new guy, so um, I guess go and eat my meat and leave. And I would eat about, you know, two pounds of uh, meat. You know, I'm not a huge guy. I'm not Sean Baker, it does three pounds. But um, I, would, I would get about, uh, yeah, about two pounds if I was lucky. Now, when I go in there, um, I bring some things with me and I want to tell you about it to increase your capacity for eating. Okay. When I would leave before, I would feel a little bit ill because I ate so much meat and, it's, and, uh, you know, it's, it's in that place, it's not grass fed. So it's grain fed. I'm eating it, you know, uh, once a week I eat, I eat grain meat, uh, shouldn't eat it at all, but, um, uh, that, that's, that's what I'm doing for that. I'm testing it, doing some experiments. So I'm doing this and then I'll, I'll back off and I'm going to see, see the change. Okay. Uh, by MRI but so when I go in there now I'm eating it with fermented vegetables okay kimchi kvass uh, fermented probiotic sauerkraut not pasteurized uh, and um, any kind of fermented vegetables curtido uh, you know fermented truly fermented probiotic raw live cultured vegetables I put a piece of the fermented food in my mouth I'll put a piece of the meat, a meat in my mouth. I chew them together, okay? Chew them together. Why? Because the fermented foods have microbes in it, okay? Just follow me on this. You get the microbes, mix it with the meat. They're your friend. They help you digest. They help you extract more nutrient. They do awesome things. If you just chew that meat, you're only putting the microbes in from your nasty mouth. Maybe you got gingivitis. Uh, maybe you got... Uh, purulence, you got dental caries, uh, dental disease, bad breath. You got bad breath, you're mixing bad bacteria in with your meat and then you're swallow in with your food, you're swallowing it. Check that out. You listen, think about that. Bad breath, you got paste, paste all over your tongue, like nasty tongue. You know, all this, uh, you know, paste on your tongue uh, and, and bad, bad mouth environment. You're chewing, you're putting all those bad microbes into your, into your food and then swallowing it and delivering all those bad microbes into your gut. Good Lord, <laughs> wake up. You don't want to be doing that, okay? So you want a clean mouth. You know, make sure you take care of your dental disease. Your mouth do not have bad breath. Um, and ferments are a great way to keep your breath fresh, your environment fresh, good microbes in there. And then chew your meats when you're breaking your fast. Chew your meat anytime you eat with fermented foods and introduce them. Don't just eat the meat and then uh, swallow and then do, chew them together. Okay, masticate them together, get them mixed up. And I also, what, what I drink, non chlorinated water. Okay, definitely not soda. No Coke, no sweet tea. Okay, no sugar. Okay, it is water, non chlorinated. I like spring water from a natural source bottle at this source. And I don't want no chemicals in it and definitely don't want any chlorine. And I put probiotic apple cider vinegar in it with the mother. Okay, I like I like the brand Bragg's. I don't have any benefit. I just, I like it. it makes it, I think it's the best. But I go around, I, I collect different brands of probiotic apple cider vinegar, different brands of kimchi, different brands of ferments. And that's, that's what I'm eating and drinking while I'm eating that meat. 
And guess what? I can eat way more. I can eat three, three and a half, sometimes almost four pounds of meat when I incorporate those ferments and those strategies. And guess what? When I leave, feel fantastic, way better than I felt when I would eat without that kind of stuff. So that's what you want to do. Leverage the microbiome. It is the single most unexploited avenue to improve your health is the microbiome. We're just, we're only scratching the surface. But if you're listening to this video, I want you to pay attention to that and start leveraging your microbiome. Well, I'm gonna get into it a lot more. That's just to introduce it in this particular setting in the context of life expectancy and this one-legged balance test with your eyes closed and your eyes open. And uh, that's probably all I'll do right now for this particular video to broach this subject. So take on points, life expectancy test. It's not a guarantee, but if you fail these tests and you're doing really bad, time to get help. Time for course correction. Uh, the, that study, both those studies would indicate that you have got a job that you got to turn yourself around, start investing in your health. If you do really, really awesome, particularly if you do it as good as me, I'd like to hear from you because I'd like to know what you're doing. Not maybe so much if you're this young person, but if you're an old, older person like me, 50, almost 60 or something, and you can stand super still with your eyes closed, videotape yourself with your eyes closed, standing like that, send it to me. I, I'd like to talk to you. I'm a researcher. I want to figure out what you're doing and we'll see if we can uh, uh, learn some things to, um, to help optimize human beings. All right, well, that's uh, today's video uh, for YouTube. I'll uh, po uh, post this, and as always, um, share with other people. Don't you know somebody that you'd like to live longer that needs to hear this message, that should be doing this test and maybe have a wake-up call? Share this video with them, okay? That's something you could do. If you like this content, give it a like, you know? Uh, I take this money, I've got a charity, I take this money, I drive, you know, a 14 year old car, okay? So um, I don't take this money to, to go live for myself. I take this money to, to be able to change um, the, the course of humanity and reverse chronic disease, okay? So give it a like, help me to get reach more people and subscribe. So you get more of these, these videos and this content. Hit the alert button so you get it right away and know when it's coming out on the, on the next one. And comment, okay? Commenting is helpful. One, it, it helps uh, YouTube uh, be able to share this with more people, and that's good, more people are commenting. So give me some content. You like, just tell me, encourage me. I need encouragement. You know, I ain't, you know, somebody making a lot of money in here. Um, you know, I do this for charity. And, uh, you know, I got noble tasks. So help me out. Give me some encouragement. And, uh, and then ask questions. I like questions. I learn. People ask some really, really interesting questions. So ask questions. Give comments. Um, really, really useful. And, again, share this with other people. So uh, let me thank you for following me. Uh, I hope to grow this and uh, continue to reach more people. And uh, I, I want to share my, my insights and be able to get, get this out there with other doctors. So um, if you listen to this and you're really interested and you're really highly motivated uh, and you want to work with me, that's the other thing you could do. You go to my website, Dr. Sean O'Mara, www.drseanomara.com, and you can find out about maybe working with me. I only work with people who are very motivated. Most people I turn away because uh, I have so limited time and uh, um, but uh, I study people that are highly motivated that I can learn from and strategies I'm gonna write a book and share with everybody wh how you got to optimize the uh, what you got to do to optimize uh, yourself and what we got to do to reverse chronic disease all right well thank you very much for following me and um, I look forward to sharing another um, awesome video on how to optimize yourself see you next time Dr. Sean out